Anybody have, well, um, yeah, yes. let's talk about these. All right, I like these no, no, no. What? Oh, I this one right here? I know. I know. A box with a square opening yeah. is squashed into a rhombus shown below. What is the area? What is the area of the opening? What? Go ahead, tell me. Oh, uh, 98. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. It's just base times height. Can I check my other? Oh, 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 okay. Is it 5, 8, 5, 4, 8? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got? What? Anybody else? Are you talking about number four over here? Yes. So hey, I think hey that listen, you are on my very last nerve. Um, so for this one, you need to Individually is what it's saying, or can you just do one day? I don't one day. Really know. Right, because look, what what's true about uh, what's true about the base? What's true about the base? No, no, no. But but I'm asking you, what is the base? What is the base of all of the parallelograms? Thank you. The base is 102. The base is 102. Oh, you're here. Right? So, listen, what I want to try to explain now is this is 102, right? Because they're parallel, that means the opposite sides are equal. So, all the bases are 102, correct? So now, someone has asked me a question, so I'm going to try to explain to them why you can just multiply 102 times the sum of the heights. Yes, but I want to show you mathematically. 102 times 106 plus 102 times 144 plus 102 times 48 plus 102 times... 100 plus 102 times 48 plus 102 times 128. Now, again, <clears throat> that would just be the area of all of the individuals, correct? Yeah, sure. But what I would really like for you to look at and just say is that you could factor out a what? 102. Yeah, Very good. You could factor out 102. All right, when you factor out 102, then you're just adding all of the heights. Okay. All right. So those of you guys who are thinking like that, is it possible to just shorten that? That is the reason why you can do that. Okay. All right. That's kind of what I would like for you to see. Okay. All right. You can do it individually. That would be the same way to do it. Or you can kind of think mathematically and say, look, because I'm multiplying 102 times all of the heights, I can just add up all the heights because you're then factoring out the one of the two. All right? Very good question. Anybody else? Uh, can you do... Oh, okay. It's, uh, what's it called? Third, not third. That's why you should have done the problem. All right? Anybody else have any questions? Good. What's well, a good five? All right. 
It says, uh, three columns are being placed at the vertices of a right triangle to support a highway. Two of the columns are marked on the coordinate plane shown. What are two possible coordinates for the third column to form the right triangle? All right, so personally, we could have just come over here and drawn this out, right? Now to find the third column, all right, we would need the slope. Oh, right? so you do y two minus y one. Yeah, so we're going to find the slope, and and in this case, we don't really need that because you could just look at this and say, here is. You know what I'm saying? The change. Right? So I went down how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, and to the right, two. Alright? So that slope is what? The slope here is negative three. Everybody okay with that? If the slope is negative three, then I need the slope to uh, for the column connecting those two points to be what? One third. Yes, you'd want the slope to equal one third, the slope of the perpendicular. All right, so now it's a matter of starting with this point right here, going up one and over three. That could be a possibility. All right. So why do we want to do it? Well, because we it says that um, exactly. All right. Now you could also come over here, and if you drew this in now, you can see that would be the right triangle that they're talking about, correct? Or you could go up one over three, up one over three here. Does that make sense? So those are two possible points, all right? Negative one, five, and one negative one. All right, that's good. It's easy, like, you can do the orthotic side and then orthotic side. And the two straight sides with uh, um, negative four and negative two, and then negative two four. So it forms a rectangle with that starting to be triangle. Well, we'll what? Uh, is if we put a point right here, then we have one right triangle and another right triangle. Um, and that's easier to find out the length of the sides. Yeah, actually, that is a good possibility. We could have just gone over to. Yep, that's true. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, so there's different possibilities there. Oh, Ryan, right. number three talks about the All right. And, of course, the areas are going to be different. All right. All right, let's pull up now 11-2. Uh, okay, so uh, for today... Um, we're doing area of trapezoids, the rhombus, and the kite. All right. We're finding the formulas for those areas. All right. For those of you guys who forgot uh, the formula for area of a trapezoid. All right. Yeah. Now, what I always try to tell kids, the, uh, the area of a trapezoid I always say it's the average of the basis times the height. All right, the average of the basis times the height is the area of the trapezoid. All right, very simple formula. All right, 
So we'll just do a couple of them here. So number one, let's just take care of that. What is that? I'm agreeing with you. Anyway. So area is equal to 16, 32 plus 18, half of that. Your area is 400 square feet. If you need that chart, you can just pull mine off. All right, somebody have any questions? Now, again, if you look at question number four, if you're looking at question number four, the height is still what? Five. The height is still five. Oh. Agreed? Oh, it's only five. Right. It's kind of like what we talked about yesterday when we were dealing with the uh, triangle, and the height can be outside the triangle. Oh. All right. So in this case, the height is still five. All right. So the area of this trapezoid would be the average of the bases, which would be 23 over 2 times 5. And I think that works out to be what? 57.5. All right. Thank you. Inches squared. All right. Very, very, very basic. All right. They don't even give us any angles or anything to try to figure out. All right, so let's go down now and find um, the area of a rhombus or the area of a height. Now, the interesting thing about the rhombus and the kite, I'd kind of like to show you this. Um, if the rhombus, all right, when, if you're thinking about the rhombus, you can cut it into what? Yeah, you can cut it in half, and then what can you tell about those two triangles? They are congruent, right? So this diagonal, right? Everybody see that? The diagonal is the height. And why is the diagonal the height? Because if you recall, right, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. All right? The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So here we go. So to find the area, you would simply say it's one half the base. In this case, I'll just call this the base right here, right? Which could be what? Diagonal two. Do I see that? Times the height. All right. Now. The height is what? Half of what? Half of D1. Did I see that? And then we're going to multiply that by what? Multiply by 2. Because the triangles occur what? Twice. All right. So I'm trying to show you what the formula is. So the 2 and the 1 half cancel out. So that's why we have one half diagonal one times diagonal two is the height of, or is the area of a rhombus. Go ahead now. There's the no, no. <coughs> Think about it. If you have a uh, square, when you start tilting the square. One diagonal gets larger and the other one gets smaller. Yes. Brian, what? Okay. Got it? Yes. Our formula is just one half times D1 and D1 is Yeah, I just showed you why or how it came out to be one half diagonal, one half diagonal. So that's all. Very straightforward. Very easy. Now, uh, that's, now, now again, Part of the reason, again, why I kind of show you that is because, you know, it's most of the time, you know, it's hard to remember all the formulas. So sometimes it's easy to just be able to say, I'm not sure what it is, but I could figure it out. All right. Now, 
that is again the same exact situation for the kite. If you look at the kite, as soon as you draw the diagonals, you notice that it creates what? Two equal what? Triangles. It creates two equal triangles. All right? So then when you draw the height, right? Right, you're finding the area of two of the same triangle. So again, it is area equals one half base times height, but then we're going to multiply by what? Two. two. So if I'm looking at this right here, the base would be diagonal one. So it would say area is equal to one half times diagonal one. The height would be half of D2 and then times two. Really easy. All right, and then this half and that two cancels. So the area is one half D1 times D2. Yes? Um. Since bombuses, since the diagonals are perpendicular, aren't all bombuses kites? Um, no. Um, the definition of kite is um, those oh, are okay. you and me, and these two are congruent. Yeah. But uh, right. Um, you um, now it. That's actually not a bad thought because um, the one definition, remember, that it leaves out is that um, in a kite, these two angles are these. It's the same formula for both. Yeah, it's the same formula for both, but I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to explain to them why the the definition of a rhombus is that uh, all sides are equal and the definition of kite is consecutive sides are equal. So I believe, okay, yeah that's a good question. I may have to look that up because these consecutive sides are congruent. The consecutive sides are still Oh, is, is it because all of the sides are congruent as opposed to two pairs of two congruent ones? Yeah, like but, I'm, but I'm trying to figure out what property doesn't apply to the kite that applies to the rhombus other than opposite sides are not congruent. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up because it seems, it seems like it's true that a rhombus is a kite, but I think I'm forgetting something. Um, but I'm not. But, but I'm agreeing with you. Yes, I see what you're saying. But I'm not sure. That's necessary. That's what I'm trying to think about. Is it is it necessary? Does in a kite does it say opposite sides are not parallel? Right. I don't know if that necessarily makes it. No, and again, that's very true. So she said something really smart. All right. It, it's, you, there is already a formula for the area of a rhombus. It's the base times the height. Oh. Right, but sometimes they're not going to give you the base and the height. They may oh. give you the diagonal. Oh. All right, so it's just a different way, all right, of figuring out the area. Yes? Is there any reason why they have the what? Oh, I think it's just showing you. I, th I think they're showing you this is the measure. I, I think that's what they're, if that's what you're asking me. Yeah, I think that's just pointing to the fact that it's a diagonal. All right, because it's kind of hard to put D2 somewhere. All right. So, again, um, I, I, honestly, very straightforward. 
I, I don't see anything there that is difficult. It's just all formulas. Yeah. Now, again, the other thing is, listen, I'm really not thinking you have trouble doing the basic algebra, like if they give you the area to find the missing side. So I'm not even going to go over that with you. All right. Um, what I want to do is I want to look at the practice. I want to see if there's anything hard here. No, I, I honestly, I think that's pretty easy. If you have a question, you can kind of read, um, you know, the study guide. I, I, those are just, you know, the formulas. Now, the main thing is I want everybody to do 11-2, the practice. Just get that done. Um, listen, I don't care about number 10 real quick. Cross that number 10. But I do care about, um, I do care about, kind of these ERB type questions. So I would like for you to, yeah, but I'm gonna pick out the ones I like. So two is good, five and four. So do two, four, and five on the word problems. And then all the, 11. And then all of the last page, and all of this right here except number 10. So it's very easy, get it done, all right? It won't take you long. 1 through 9, and then uh, 2, 4, 5.